Thank you very much, Trudy. I'm, I'm really honored to be asked to, to chair this panel. It's, it's great that you've, you know, with this panel, you bring in such a diverse perspective to comment on uh, you know, what, what is about to be launched. And so without further ado, I, I'd like to introduce our first speaker of the panel, uh, Babatunde. I think he is like Madonna. <laughs> <laughs> he said, you could just introduce me as Babatunde. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, I said that earlier this morning because I didn't really want you to put you through all pronouncing all the names. <laughs> so the, <clears throat> first, I'd like to thank uh, Trudy and her team for for inviting me to give this short talk. Um, they wanted me to make it short. I don't know how I can talk about realities of conducting research in African countries for f five to ten minutes. It's going to be difficult. I'm going to give it a try, and. Um, First, I, I'd say again, I'd like to conduct it to Trudy and her team because four years ago, I heard about Global Health Network in an EDCTP meeting. That was the first time I heard about it. I went through the, because I'd known Trudy for a long time, I think 14 years now, something, yeah. something like that. And then when she told me about it, and I, said, I got this leaflet and she gave a talk, and I said, oh, good luck, and see where it is now. It's really good. Thank you very much. I think you're doing a great job. Now to my talk. I'm trying to, I've made a list of issues I think we, we should address. Uh, we came from a meeting last week, some of you were there, in uh, Berlin where we talked about all these issues in uh, EDCTP meeting. And I worked on both sides of the divide, first as a principal investigator in Africa, as Europe, in European institution funding and uh, being sponsors and interacting with industry, and now with an academic institution, the Jenna Institute in the University of Oxford. So most of the things I've listed are not new to you, but maybe it's the way I'm going to present them that might be new to you, and I'll try to go as quickly as I possibly can. Difficulty with securing partnerships and finding support. We know a lot that uh, most some of these clinical uh, trial sites and clinical research institutions in Africa I've built uh, some partnerships with Northern Partners, and it's difficult sometimes to break into these partnerships. And sometimes you, are, as a researcher, it's difficult sometimes to, 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 to try and get into uh, finding support to do your, your research. Sponsorship of clinical trials in institutions and for institutions and investigators specifically. I'm talking about ICHGCP sponsorship. That is 23 items listed in sponsors of responsibilities under the ICGCP um, E6 section 5. It is not just the funding of the trial, not just the money you have to put into the trial, but the 23 items where you have to look at quality, you have to look at transport of vaccines, you have to look at production of vaccines, you have to look at all those things. And now increasingly, most European institutions would go, go to do tri uh, trials in Africa or research in Africa do not want to sponsor clinical trials. It's really when comes to taking, talking about insurance for, for, for conducting these trials. And now it's now becoming uh, the imperative for institutions and investigators to begin to think about sponsoring their own clinical trials. The ICAGCP allows you to do investigator sponsored trials, and that is what most, um, one of the institutions here, last week in, uh, in Berlin, in Mali, tried to give an, uh, an, the experience of what he had trying to just to, to, to sponsor a clinical trial. It was really a tough, tough experience for him, and I think he has learned a lot from that. We're talking about funding support lacking from most African governments. That's pretty clear. The ratio of government-owned, operated, and independently funded research organizations in Africa is definitely skewed towards uh, the independent uh, research institutions. I hope that the process map, I had a quick look yesterday. I hope the process map uh, talk, uh, involves giving you ideas on how to talk to governments about funding. Mm -hmm. That is something really, really difficult. Governments will tell you, yes, we have some institutions in which we have, we have put, we're putting some money because some of the staff that are doing these trials are, are, 
have been paid directly by us and some of the basic things have been taken care of by us. But I think that's not all of it and they need to understand that. They need to do a little bit more. Not a little bit, I think a lot more. Training, especially with regards to middle research, level research staff, there's always a concentration now. Everybody's talking about MSCs, PhDs, postdocs, all th that's all you hear. But like Trudy said, there's a lot of support staff that need to go into running, I mean, uh, conducting research and especially clinical trials in Africa. That we need to begin to look at. Sustainability of clinical trial research step after funding for specific projects come to an end. The question is how do we attract grants to conduct clinical research? Most of these grants are four years, five years. After that, what happens to all the staff that you, you have, especially the middle level and the lower level staff? What happens to them? So it's sometimes it's so difficult to begin to understand this. There's a talk of involving universities because they are more sustainable, but then the universities themselves are not properly funded by the governments, whoever they owns them. So state mentorship of research staff. How do we promote South-South mentorship? Because that's, that is really important, and I think that, personally, that's my view, that we need to promote South-South mentorship of research staff. Using this process map will be brilliant, but we need to promote sustained mentorship of research staff. South-South, we need to talk, the Gambia needs to talk to somebody in South Africa, Burkina Faso needs to talk to somebody in Kenya, Kenya in, in Gambia, things like that. Those are the type of things that we need to promote. Research funding focus on mainly on HIV, malaria, and TB. I, 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 I was listening to, to, to Trudy, and she fell into that trap because she said HIV, malaria, and TB. <laughs> so I knew. <laughs> That's all we think about most of these days, HIV, malaria, and TB, and funding research for, for uh, neglected tropical diseases. I think you know the 14 of them by WHO, listed by WHO, and more difficult to obtain and so, so difficult to obtain especially in Africa. We saw some goring pictures of, of some, some of those diseases in last week in, uh, in, from Ghana uh, in, uh, in, in the meeting in Berlin. Uh, I, I, I mean, as a physician myself, I, I was asking the, the, uh, the, the presenter to quickly push his button and remove those pictures from the, from, from the screen. It was really, as they were really bad. So I hope it woke up some people to begin to think about it. Now, the, the last but not the least I, issue that I, I tried to, to list, uh, all these are listed quickly. Difficulty to obtain or get time away from work to attend training in other institutions. That is the, some of the basic things. African scientists and those who are healthcare workers who are involved in research and who, they need to feed their families. They can't take four or five years away from work and, and begin to, to come out here to do, to do, to do a training. It's difficult. And what happens to their families? They need to feed them. These are basic things that we need to think about um, when, we, when we make this, when we make this uh, to con talk about conducting research. Now, solutions. Not enough, it's not enough to just list issues and criticize them, but what are, you, what are we going to do about them? What are we trying to do about them? Now, the Jena, we, we, at Jena Institute, where I work, we were taking training to African will be researchers, and, and um, recently we launched uh, the uh, uh, Vaccinology in Africa course, because I work mainly on vaccines, uh, mainly malaria vaccines, uh, developing malaria vaccines. And in the f last year, we ran the first course in Vaccinology in Africa in, in Ghana. We had 157 applications in three weeks for 30 places was very successful. T this year, we intend to run another course in, in Nairobi in October. We've just closed the applications. It, ran for, it was open for one month, and we had over 270 applications for 30 positions. And it's a free course uh, sponsored by, by, by Jenna Foundation, GSK, and, uh, and Mac, Mac uh, Sanofi, and, and Crucel, and one other are thinking about sponsoring us. So they know how important it is, and we at least we have to be able to sell it. But, and most importantly why we're here, the Global Health Network. Four years on, like I said, uh, it's amazing what they have done. And I looked at 
the, uh, the map yesterday, I looked at the map yesterday, and two words came out of my mouth, and that's simply brilliant. And I think it's something that, that uh, can, there are a few things that I, I know that I would need to, I, I made a few points yesterday on what I think could be, could be, could, could make it better. But uh, that's between me and Trudy and the team, and uh, <laughs> not for you to, <laughs> not for me to say. But the, 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 the process map, we expect, I think, the outcome will be locally led uh, evidence based research, South South cooperation, really, into that locally led evidence based research. A lot of time and effort has been put into this. It's obvious, if you look at it, a lot of time and effort has put into this. And of course, uh, a little bit of funding from, from you know who. Now we have the process map. Now the important thing is how do we get the African research to, researchers to buy, to buy into this and use it. And the word is use it. That is the million penny question. Thank you. Thank you very much, Babatunde. That's a really good perspective from somebody who's a supervisor for a major uh, clinical trials network.